I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. Let me tell you a story. Picture this. Sicily, 1939. No, just kidding. I really just wanted to start with a Golden Girls reference. Anyway, what you're listening to right now is I'm standing behind a table for my own booth at a local pop-up event here called the Hibernation Liberation. It was at a bar called Plan B. On the wall behind me is a giant photo of a half-naked man lying down on it. And I'm standing in front of it with a microphone and a digital recorder. So the question is, how did I get here? When I started American Bandito a year ago, I had no idea where it would take me. It was just a simple idea. Create a podcast about art and then go meet people to talk to. One of those people that I talked to was Tammy, and she does tons of pop-up events. I thought they sounded kind of cool, so I asked if I could do one of those things. So there we had it, not even a year into me starting this podcast and I was participating in an art event. Of course, then it occurred to me, what in the world was I going to do there? One of the things I was doing is I was making my blog posts that I do every day, the comics that you see on the site, and putting them together in monthly books. And then I had some American Bandito logos that I did on t-shirts around the house. Then the idea came to me. I thought, what got me here in the first place? Talking to people. So I had this idea that I would just explain to people what I do and see if they wanted to give it a try while they're standing there. Hi, my name is Rourke. Hi, Rourke. And you're just out here checking out some cool stuff? Yeah, yep. Okay, so you're going to school. What what, What are your favorite things in school? Um, reading, science, math, um, and music. And music. And what, also art. Okay. And what, uh, what do you like about music? Are you playing something? Uh, no, but I'm going to be a uh, really good drummer when I grow up. Ooh, a drummer. Nice. Do you have a drum set? Uh, no, but I'm going to buy one. <laughs> really? You got a job already? Hi. And then, and then what's your name? All right, and that was the end of his interview. He walked away. (laughs) Okay, beyond this, last season I went around to local shops and galleries and talked to people. While I did that, I got to see some of the work that they had in these places. I started following some of the people's work that I saw there on Instagram. And then from that, I started following people that they were following. And soon, I was contacting some of these people to be on the show. And here's something that was interesting. Some people started reaching out to me to be on it. Since I had gone out into the world to do this the last time, I decided to keep up with that tradition. This was my idea. I would meet them in the neighborhood that they live and talk with them while we walked around the block. So I did. I'm Kelly Savage Angel. I am a writer and a poet here on the Near East Side of Madison. So I was wondering how you pronounce it. I wanted to say savage, and well, it's the, savage. Well, the thing is, it auto-corrects to sausage um, <laughs> whenever anybody texts me or puts me into a computer anywhere. So, oh, funny. yeah, anything beyond sausage is good with me. <laughs> so Kelly was one of the first people to contact me because she had listened to the show, which I thought was pretty cool. She's a writer living in the Atwood area. So while we walked around the neighborhood, she talked to me about her book, which has a very unique title and premise. So what was the title of it and what's it about? Om Nama. It is about betrayal, redemption, and the best ribs on the Near East Side of town. It's a meat thing. I'm going to need you to elaborate on that one. So (laughs) Basically, it was inspired by a pretty awful experience I had with a spiritual teacher. And it was the way I healed myself was through the writing of my protagonist healing and yeah ribs come into play it's actually a point where she starts realizing that she needs to tend to her own needs which just so happen to be carnivorous wow so at first glance i i thought like oh this is just a spiritual book but it's actually you write sex <laughs> well yeah yeah I'm, I'm not trying to shy away from that i'm a, i'm a human adult i know what that is but i thought it was just going to be like oh an instructional or something like that and it is not no no I, those are instructions i probably would not follow what brought about you deciding to deal with this in a book uh, you 
you know, I, I think I'm pretty honest with myself in my my waking conscious days. But I learned so much about what's actually making me tick and where I am yeah. as I'm writing. So a lot of things come out in my writing that I'm sure the readers pick up on. But fortunately, I do too. And so some of the dynamics, there's, there's, a, there's a scene where the protagonist, Kavya, is interacting with Shambhavi. And it's an of intimate course. moment. Yes. And she realizes that, that there's a part of her that's seeking a maternal figure. And so here, all, I'm gleaning all this information about my character, yeah. who just so happens to parallel myself in so many ways. That's not uh, uncommon. No. I mean, the book itself, how did you prepare? Okay, so to me, even just putting together... Like a PDF is a, is, yeah. is a daunting task. How do you how do you arrange a book? One's that, one that needs to be like edited and updated and probably proofread. As cliche as it sounds, it was effortless. It was a couple of summers ago that I actually did the writing, and from one night to the next, I I wouldn't remember what came out. I would just keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. And once it was done, the story was there. And I'm so grateful. I mean, they're, it's so honest, and I think that comes across. Whereas if I had spent a lot of time outlining and plotting, it, which is a wonderful thing for a writer to do. <laughs> <laughs> I've but, heard. <laughs> but if I had done it in this instance, it, it would have stolen some of the thunder okay. and the cathartic sort of feel behind it. Yeah. Which, and from what I've heard, it was taught at Madison College spring semester this past year. And a lot of the students in reading their papers, I was privy to, yeah. to see their feedback, is they related to it. I mean, huh. even young women related to being in situations where there were abuses of power and they found it healing to see that they weren't alone and also to see that you can come out on the other side. It, it's funny, somebody in town here and you see that the book is available on Amazon and you don't think that there are going to be reviews of it. And you've got like a ton of reviews on oh, there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> How many books have you written total so far? I have two more that are waiting in the wings. The next one is actually set here in the Outwood neighborhood, and I hope to see that out in, by spring. All right, how far are you on it? What, what can you tell me about it? The writing's done. It's just a matter of my tying up a few loose ends. Okay. Do you have a proofreader, or do you have a publisher? I mean, I know you can self-publish. I have a wonderful editor by the name of Kathy Steffen. She's been an absolute godsend. Yeah. It's, it's really exciting to work with somebody who gets you. you. Because there's so much of a relationship that's cultivated in working on a larger piece. That She just knows me inside and out, and she can call my characters bluffs. And, and yeah. she's, she's just really a gift. How did you meet her? Uh, at the Right by the Lake retreat. Oh, I'm unfamiliar with that. Yeah, that? yeah, it's at UW in the summers. Okay. And then, in addition, I have beta readers, including Holly Myers, uh -huh. Bill Roberts, and a couple others. Are they actually called beta readers? I don't know if I've ever they heard are. that term before. They are. They're my beta readers. It makes it sound like a cult. Like, <laughs> like these are my minions. No, I think more a beta fish. I know, <laughs> I know they'll let me know if there's something they, they want to chew on for a while. So for book covers and things, writers aren't necessarily going to be able to go, oh, and then I'll make a book cover. <laughs> right. How do you source a book cover? Yeah, I have no like visual art ability whatsoever. For the next one, I'm hoping to get an artist friend of mine to do it for me. It's one of those things you don't think about. It's like... Oh, I stress about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to be the one that approves it, and you're just like... Who do you think you are to tell this person that <laughs> they need to make a change? Do you ever worry about that sort of I thing? I don't no. worry about that at all. The, Good. the people I work with here in the neighborhood are so incredibly talented and insightful. Yeah. That that's never an issue. They always 
go beyond and exceed all my expectations. The, putting yourself out there, I mean, you've said that a lot of this stuff is based on personal stuff, yet it is, if I remember correctly, you said it's science fiction sort of style, or it, it tends to be sometimes. This one isn't science fiction, but I've been writing a lot of science fiction lately. Which is fun. And it is so much fun. <laughs> it serves as a really good platform for discussing social issues. Yeah. And so I feel as though it's a place where I can have my say when sometimes you don't feel like your voice is necessarily being heard. Yeah, and it also gives you the ability to put it in a situation of the absurd to really point it out is what I've noticed in the past. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. I have a couple of pieces coming out here over the next couple of months that I'm just tickled to um, have see the light of day because I think they're pretty timely. But it, putting yourself out there personally or telling a story that's very personal to you was it hard to defeat that or was it just something that came naturally it's always come naturally and yeah. it's always gotten me into a lot of trouble <laughs> really? I, yeah yeah absolutely in fact m my ex was convinced that all of my fiction was based in real life so i've had a f i've had a couple of stage plays destroyed in the process oh, no. and some I've, I've always been really revealing in my work yeah. because for me, it's, it's a place of honesty and a place of connection. And that's how you make a connection with a reader is by being unabashedly yourself. Do you, how do you promote it once you put it out, too? I mean, you said that you did plays. I mean, how are you finding all these opportunities to make and produce and put out this stuff? Well, I'm a terrible marketer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely atrocious. But I, I've produced a lot of work that's very dear to me. You know, fortunately, it'll get into the right hands and the word will spread. But I'm sure I could be a little more comfortable if I were a little more proactive with uh, well, the I business mean, side of things. You reached out to me. I mean, not like I'm some huge Hollywood producer or <laughs> something. I just realized this one street we walked down, like all the stories have changed like in the past couple months. There's been a lot of change in the neighborhood. Weird. And so you're writing about this neighborhood. Uh, what prompted you to... That's weird. That was a great segue. <laughs> um, <laughs> what prompted you to write your next story about this neighborhood, really? I, I couldn't help it. I was just seeing it change so quickly right before my eyes. And when, when I wrote Beyond the Robes, I thought, you know what? This will have import in five to ten years. Yeah. Little did I realize that within six months, the neighborhood would look completely different. It, it, is that something that parallels what's going on in the book? Is Absolutely. Oh, yeah, so fun. I was a little prophetic. I don't know if I should take any responsibility for it or not. But, <laughs> what but did you I, do? <laughs> I saw it coming. I saw it coming. Wow. So you plan to have this book out in next year sometime? Yep, yep, in the spring, probably March or April. And is there anything else uh, that you'd like to mention that maybe I didn't think of or that we haven't talked about? Oh gosh, well there are so many things. I'm the editor of the haiku column for the East Side News, so feel free to submit your haiku. We're always looking for voices in the neighborhood. Nice. Otherwise, I love this neighborhood. It's my home and it's wonderful to meet people who feel as as strongly for it as I do. I gotta say, going out and actually interacting with an artist on their own turf turned out to be pretty cool. There's one big thing that I forgot about with this entire concept. This is Wisconsin, and winter was coming, and I certainly wasn't gonna make people walk around in that. Next time on the show, I talk with another writer named Linda, and she shows me around the new downtown public library. You can learn more about this podcast at AmericanBandito.com or read my daily comic blog. And if you haven't already, you can subscribe to the show at AmericanBandito.com slash subscribe. Until next time, so long. <laughs>